Hello everyone, I'm Happy Caldwell, and I'm so glad that you joined me today for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. All week we're talking about the abundant life. Jesus said, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to get a revelation of an abundant life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus has brought to us and given us an abundant life. It's all encompassing everything that we'll ever desire and need. And I want you to get it today. I believe the Holy Spirit will quicken to you this revelation. And I believe the Holy Spirit is right there with you watching and that you're going to get an infusion, if you please, of the love of God and the reality of what Jesus has done for us. And if you are not living an abundant life, and I'll repeat what that means, uh, that you will receive it by faith and start living uh, life and life more abundantly. So stay tuned. Arkansas Alive starts right now. Our scripture text of course, was John chapter 10 and verse 10. And Jesus is teaching his disciples. And he said, the thief, who is Satan, came not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. There's, n- there's nothing else that Satan came to do. That's all. That's all he is. That's all he has to offer is uh, theft, murder, and destruction. He didn't come for anything else. If you if you think that he's got some good in him, you're wrong. The Bible does not teach that or support that. So Satan has one uh, goal, and that is to steal, kill, and destroy. There's no good in him, and there's no bad in God. There's no good in the devil. Uh, but Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So we defined yesterday the life that he's talking about is the Zoe of God. He said, I've come that you might have life. Hebrew word Zoe means the God kind of life. It's the life that you got when you got born again. And so many times we think that that life is just a religious life, just so we can go to church, give our tithes, be a good person. But that life is encompassing of everything that God intended when he created man. You know, I've, I've read the book of Job so many times, did an entire teaching on it called Job, a story of faith. And I'm amazed that when God was dealing with Job, conversing with Job, uh, and Job eventually had to admit and he repented that he had spoken wrongly of God. You remember that? You've heard it lots of times. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, the Lord didn't take anything away from Job. Satan did. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. God came that he might give Job uh, abundance and life. And Job even acknowledged. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my daysman is out there. He was referring to Christ. Job lived under a different covenant than we live under as New Testament Christians. But he knew there was a mediator. He knew there was somebody out there that he did not know about yet. You know, I did about half a dozen world leadership conferences with Dr. Lester Summerall in Israel, in Jerusalem, all around the central part there of of Israel. And every year uh, while we were leading bus tour groups, Brother Summerall was taking his uh, camera crew out into the desert uh, that took the Israelites 40 years to get through, and you can drive it across it in a day in a bus. (laughs) But that's because they kept going around in circles because of their rebellion, disobedience, and so forth. But Brother Samuel would go out there, and he'd go up to the, and you can still see those camps today. They're massive uh, Bedouins, and that's probably what Abram, Abraham and his people looked like. And uh, they would go, he would go out there in those camps, And he would sit in those tents with those Bedouins and he would ask them, do you know of a Redeemer? Do you know of the promised one? Do you know of a Messiah? And they would all say, yes, 
we know Messiah, we know Messiah is coming. They don't know Jesus as, as, as uh, son of God and savior of the world, but they know that a Messiah, they know that a redeemer is coming today. They know that they're looking for him. And in, in Job's day, Job said, I know my redeemer liveth. He said, I just don't know him. I don't know where he, I don't know how to find him. Well, when God began to uh, interrogate uh, Job, he began to ask him questions. <laughs> he said, Job, uh, you think you know so much. Tell me, where were you when I created the foundations of the earth? If you have knowledge, tell me. Where were you when I put the stars in the skies and the stars sang together? If you have knowledge, tell me. Well, of course, Job didn't know. I don't know if you saw. Uh, it hadn't been real recently, but some time ago, a little while ago, uh, you saw Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Brazos of Amazon and uh, uh, another guy that were going to the moon. In fact, they had rockets and they took people up, up into space. I'm not going to the moon. They were going up into space. And they asked these guys, what, what are you doing this for, space exploration? Why are you wanting to go to other planets? <laughs> well, some of them are just pioneers and they want to go into the uh, space wars type thing. But as Jeff Brazos, I, I thought this was very interesting. And, and uh, all these guys think that the earth as we know it today is not going to be able to last you know, they believe the, the hoax, the myth of climate change, global warming. They believed all of that garbage. And the founder of the Weather Channel flat wrote an article exposing all that and says uh, climate change, global warming is all a hoax. It's all designed to get funding. The government funds research scientists to prove that climate change, global warming are going to take place. So if you you know, write stuff on it. They'll pay you for it. And it's, it's all a sham. The founder of the weather uh, channel said it's, it's not real. It's all funded. It's all about money. So <clears throat> most of these guys think that the earth is going to explode, deteriorate. You know, they're partially right in that God is going to renovate the earth with fire, but not now and not yet. And uh, they think that the earth is going to be uh, uh, destroyed, self-polluted, going to destroy itself. And we're going to have to find new galaxies and new planets to live on. So that's what they're doing it for. Elon Musk and uh, I've forgotten the third guy's name. But anyway, Jeff Brazos, he, he says he's going to find other planets so he can start Amazon. <laughs> he's going to make more money. He's going to build Amazon in the galaxies in these other planets. So it's all self-motivated and it's all uh, self-gratuity uh, and money. And, you know, I want to be the first on planet Pluto or whatever. And Amazon of Pluto, whatever the case may be, I'm making light of it. But the Bible is very clear. The earth is going nowhere. It's, it's going to remain as long as seed time and harvest remains, the earth is going to remain. And God said that it would. So I believe him. I don't believe the scientists that are gaining money from research uh, to support the government's con job on the American people. Of everything is blamed on climate change. Global warming. Well, it used to be global warming, but people didn't buy into global warming, so they changed it to climate change. The climate has always changed. Climate is forever changing. It'll continue as long as there's an earth. And, and we're not killing the earth. Oh, yeah, we're doing some bad things and trashing in a lot of ways, but we're not killing the earth. The earth reconstructs itself, represents itself, and it'll continue to do so until God gets ready to cleanse it by fire and it's renovated it's not destroyed. It doesn't go away because if you read the Bible, God, 
Jesus and all the saints, born again saints, are going to move from the third heaven, which the Bible says heaven is on the northern part of the universe. Maybe some of these space jockeys, well, <laughs> maybe God will suck them up into heaven one day and then they'll realize that what's real and what's not real. But uh, this earth is going to be renovated, renewed, and then everybody that's in the third heaven is going to move to the new renovated earth. And some Bible uh, scholars, uh, prophetic teachers, end time events, some of those people uh, use the phraseology that earth will enter into its final career. You know, the beginning of earth's career was when it was created by God. And the Bible, in Genesis, it, it supports that. God created the star. God created the land. And the Holy Spirit moved across the face of the deep. And the oceans were formed, everything. And then man, man's put on the earth. And, you know, sure, man has, you know, polluted and messed up and all kinds of stuff. But it hadn't destroyed the earth as we know it. And it'll constantly be changing. There'll constantly be climate change until uh, after the rapture takes place and the I mean the uh, uh, seven years of tribulation, then the millennial reign, then <clears throat> God's going to cleanse. He's going to renew the earth, cleanse it with fire. Then we're all going to come live here. And earth is going to continue to be what God intended for it to be. So you go all the way back to Adam. When God told Adam, he said, Adam, I want you to take dominion over this creation that I've given you. I want you to take ownership of it. I want you to keep it. I want you to dress it. I want you to till it. And we're going to go all the way back. Now, listen to how, how I say this. and I, I hope I say it right. We're going to go all the way back to the Garden of Eden and what God created and intended for man to have as his possession to live on. Keep this in mind. God created the universe for the earth. God created the earth for man. And God created man for himself. So if you get all that and keep it in proper perspective, you won't get off. My, <laughs> one of my grandsons, <clears throat> he's smart, but he tends to veer off into uh, some stuff that he watches on the internet or whatever. And he was telling me, oh, this was a couple of years ago. He was telling me that he said, <clears throat> granddaddy, he said, they've lied to us. I said, who? Who's lied to NASA. He said, how have they lied to us? He said, the earth is flat. The world is flat. And they've told us that it's round. <laughs> I said, man, where did you hear that? Well, he'd been listening or reading after this flat earth theory. The earth is not flat. It's round. I said, well, what do, you, what do you think those pictures are that the astronauts take out of the windows of the space capsule? I, should, I said, it shows the earth and everything is round. Oh, no, those are all, you know, made in the studio. My grandfather. Now, here's, listen, listen to this. My grandfather was born in 1889. He was born in South Louisiana where they had no electricity they had, they had no utilities, no conveniences. They used coal oil lanterns and they drank out of a well. And, and when uh, the first, oh, when the first shot to the moon was made, my grandfather watched it on television. He was glued to it. And now you got to realize, here's a guy who grew up without electricity, without anything. He, he was glued to this. A man walking on the moon. Now, my grandfather, my father, me, my son, and now my grandson. That's five generations. My grandfather said he was sitting in his living room. And the next door, uh, the, the lady next door, I still remember her name, Miss Darren Becker. She came over. She raised chickens in the backyard. They all, in fact, the, when, when they were inducted into the city limits, <clears throat> the, their milk cow and their chickens all came with it because they were grandfathered in. 
So they all had a milk cow in the barn and chickens in the barn and had eggs. And she came walking in the house and she asked my grandfather, she said, Mr. Caldwell, what are you doing? What are you watching? He said, I'm watching them land on the moon. Sit down. She said, that's, that's not real. She said, oh, shaw. That's what they used to, terminology they used, colloquial slang for baloney. I don't believe it. Oh, shaw. She said, Mr. Caldwell, they're not landing on the moon. She said, they're filming that out in Hollywood to make you think they're landing on the moon. <laughs> my grandfather didn't believe it. He believed they were landing on the moon. In fact, he ordered the book that they were selling uh, in, in broadcasting these events. It was put out by Gulf Oil. It, it was called They Came in Peace. You might remember it if you're old enough. And they were in little space suits. And my grandfather gave that to me. And I still have it. And this was, I don't remember what year it was. But anyway, you go five generations. Now, here's my grandson. And he don't believe the earth is round. He believes it's square. <laughs> and so I sent him to Dr. Carl Ball, Glen Rose, Texas, to the Creation Evidence Museum. I said, I, well, I gave him some tapes. I told him to pull it up on the website. I said, he can teach you and prove to you out of the scriptures that the scriptures are correct. The earth is round. Well, we're going to go all the way back to the original purpose of the earth, the earth's original creation and original purpose. And the earth is never going anywhere. It's not going to pass away. So you don't have to believe all of that uh, stuff that's up there trying to persuade you one way or another. Okay, so Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, <clears throat> let's go to John 14, and let's look at uh, verse 16. John 14, 6, uh, John 14, 6. We're talking about an abundant life. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We're talking about abundant life. Zoe, superior in quality, su superabundant in quantity, excessive beyond measure. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now, you may have heard somebody, preachers included, say that there's, uh, you know, many ways to God. No, there's not, not according to the Bible. The Bible says Jesus is the only way to the Father. There is not many ways, uh, Muhammad and Buddha and all the other isms that it, the Bible does not refer to them. It refers to Jesus. He is the only way to the Father. Now, keep this in mind what Jesus said, I am the way. The way to where? The way to what? Go with me over to Hebrews chapter 9, and let's look at <clears throat> verse 8, 11, 12, and 24. Hebrews 9, 8. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Now he goes on and explains that the first tabernacle that Moses built was a figure. It was a type and a shadow of the real tabernacle that was to come. But notice it says the Holy Ghost has signified that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. Now you understand Temple worship and all the things that the priests did in the Old Covenant was only a type and a shadow. It was a schoolmaster. It was not the real. The tabernacle Moses built was a type, a pattern of the real that's in heaven today. And that is the way that Jesus was talking about. He said, I am the way. Not, not the blood of bulls and goats and not temple worship. I'm the way. Jesus was saying, I am the way. And here it says... The way to what? The way to the holiest of all. Wow. The holiest of all. The way to the mercy seat where Jesus was going to put his blood on the mercy seat 
to redeem humanity from Adam's transgression, from death, hell, and the grave. This is, this is the abundant life, folks. It's all wrapped up in this, in this one revelation. Okay. Jesus said, I'm the way. No man comes to the Father but by me. I'm the way. It's going to develop. Listen. And now you go over to verse 11. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He didn't do this for himself. He did it for us that we might have abundant life. I've come that you might have abundant life. But what he doesn't go into in John 10, 10 is that he is the one that paved the way uh, for this abundant life because he placed his blood on the mercy seat in the true holy of holies. Not the one Moses built, not the, not the pattern, not the type, but the real holy of holies in heaven. <laughs> no, no blood of bulls and goats would, would work there. Uh, the sacrificial animals that they gave under the Old Testament and the, and the Old Covenant, that, that wouldn't take away man's sin. Yeah, all it did was act as a covering. It covered, uh, it atoned for their sins. It was a substitute until Jesus could come. And when Jesus came, he put his blood on the Holy of Holies to make eternal redemption. He was the way. Jesus told the disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And, and it tells us how, how he did it. I don't know if I am. Yeah, here it is. Let's go down to verse 14. Wasn't in my notes, but I remembered this. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, underline that, the eternal spirit, the Holy Spirit, the blood of Christ, through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, without spot refers back to the Passover lamb. If you read the qualifications for the Passover lamb uh, back in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, all those, if you, if you go back and you read the qualifications for the sacrificial lamb, Passover lamb, one of the requirements was, is that it be a lamb without spot, no flaws, no blemishes. And I did this one time teaching about the incarnation during Christmas time. <clears throat> if you go back and read all of the qualifications of the Passover lamb, had to be slain on a certain day, could have no spots or blemishes, blah, blah, blah. Jesus met every qualification of the Passover lamb. They had to kill him at the, at the, uh, at the, at the right hour and, and they had to eat him uh, all at once. Everything that was required of the Passover lamb under the old covenant, the first covenant, Jesus met for the new covenant. And here is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit <laughs> is offering Jesus' blood on the mercy seat. The way has been instituted now. Now, through the blood of Christ. Now, ooh, we're talking about an abundant life. <laughs> now, this abundant life has been guaranteed for whosoever will. Every believer can partake of this abundant life <laughs> because of what Jesus did. Now, I like <clears throat> these kind of things. The Holy Spirit was involved in creation. The Holy Spirit was involved in Jesus' supernatural birth. The Holy Spirit was involved in Mary's pregnancy. The Holy Spirit was involved in Jesus' resurrection from the dead, from the grave. The Holy Spirit is involved in everything that takes place in our covenant with God. And now here's the Holy Spirit. 
And, you know, I don't know how this was done. I just know that it was. The Holy Spirit, and let's just use natural modern vernacular since I don't have anything better to use. The Holy Spirit goes into the Holy of Holies where God is. And he takes the blood of Jesus, the same Jesus that the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary and she conceived and brought forth a son, named him Emmanuel, Jesus, and he was God incarnate. So God had provided for himself a sacrifice. Abraham said that when he offered Isaac up. And, and uh, Isaac said, uh, Lord, uh, Father, where is the lamb? Where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide himself with a sacrifice. That's prophetic all the way from Abraham's day to Christ's day. And now here's the Holy Spirit and he takes the blood of Christ and he puts it on the mercy seat. And the way is now opened for mankind to receive abundant life. Whew. Now man, <laughs> man has the uh, audience, if you please, has the wherewithal. He has the ability to go into the Holy of Holies because of Jesus. You have the right to go into God's presence. You have the right to, to use the name of Jesus. You have the right to walk in newness of life. And, and we're not done yet on the way. The way is just the first part of what Jesus said, the way, the truth, and the life. Whoo, Hallelujah. I'm so glad you joined us for this, this lesson. Some of you are shouting. Some of you might be getting healed right now. Uh, just relax and enjoy uh, what God has. Now, tomorrow, uh, we'll keep reading scriptures in Hebrews about the way. An abundant life. It's a good life. It's your life. So join me for tomorrow's Arkansas Live. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas. And where you live, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.